Hi, good morning, and welcome to this week's Monday Minutes. My name is Kelly. And my name is Jesse. And this week, we're going to talk to you about authorized values. You know, we thought it would be a great way for us to talk about all the options you have in there, whether you're creating a new one, adding a new value to a category, or even removing something. So what we'll do is we'll start in administration. And then right under those basic parameters, we're going to hit the last line down there. And that is authorized values. So Kelly, give us a quick overview of this table. Yeah, first of all, I always preach anything that's a drop down menu in Koha lives in this table. So if you have a drop down menu when you're cataloging or doing anything in Koha and you see a drop down menu, it's going to live here. On the far left, there are these are the categories. And so they'll this is where all those values are going to live. In the 1911 view, I love that they've added this description so you can kind of get a clue on what some of these are because some you are not going to know as easily with the category itself as Jesse's highlighting. This is for the housebound module. So it's housebound frequency, but now that we have a nice description, we can easily know what that, that does. Um, and then we also have on the far right is just the action, like add something to this category. I prefer to actually go and click the category, but either, either way, you'll be able to add more um, to the category. So collection code is the one that Jesse's hovering on. So you can see this is the authorized values, the description, a description in the OPAC. So if you want to describe it differently to your patrons than how you describe it to your staff member. Mm -hmm. You have some two options at the top. Um, you can add a new category. So this is a brand new authorized value, or you can add a value, a new value to collection code um, there. Yep. And I'm going to pause right now because these two buttons are sometimes confusing. So we're just reiterating again. You may be in collection code and you want to add a new value to collection code. Clearly this one says new authorized value for C code, but sometimes you're just like working quickly and you're like, oh, boom, let me hit this new category. Again, this creates a brand new authorized value category. So just as you're working, keep your eyes peeled for, you know, those two different buttons, because I will say I am guilty of it myself. I have done that just moving really fast. And then I hit that button type and then I'm like, sugar, honey, iced tea. I just created a new category. <laughs> but what's happening in 2005, we were just talking about that. That will be, you'll be able to delete that accident, that accident category you created. So right now you can actually delete the category if you create one in an accident, but, um, you will in 2005. So Kelly, let's do an example here. Why don't we use the new claims returned um, as an option? So you'll see here we have that return claim resolution. So, you know, a patron tells us that they brought something back um, and lo and behold, it magically comes back. Mm -hmm. There's two yeah. in here by default, found in library or returned by patron. Why don't we add a new value in there um, as an example? Absolutely. So let's go ahead and create that new authorized value for return claim resolution. Very important key is this value, authorized value. It's going to be 10 characters or less, no spaces, um, and all in caps. So those are the three things you need to remember. Well, after we do this, we'll talk a little bit about authorized values for other categories in, in Koha, but right now we'll do one. Jesse gave you a good example. Book drop, that's our value. Description found in book drop. Perfect. And again, I used all caps, um, eight letters, and we'll say this is available for all libraries since we have multiple branches in here. Perfect. All right, Kelly, let's talk a little bit about an authorized value where you may have numerical values. Yes, absolutely. There are a few that you definitely need to only use numeric values in Koha. One of those is not for loan, lost, withdrawn, damaged. But let's look at the not for loan because this one's a little bit more unique than those others. Yeah. 
you can see our authorized values are numeric and we have positive and negative integers. And we're diving deep here, but that would tell COHA whether an item that is in the not for loan status is either holdable or not holdable. So a positive um, integer would be not for, hold, not for loan or not holdable, sorry. And then a negative would be allowed to be placed on hold. So something you have ordered or in processing or in cataloging, you would still allow a patron to place that on hold in the OPAC. That's right. And you'll notice, again, you can edit these if you wanted to change it. Um, you know, I've seen sometimes people will say in technical services, um, you know, easily you can come over here and select those under actions. I hit edit. So if I wanted to say technical services, you know, I can come in here and make those changes. And the best thing is, Jesse, instant changes, instant. You will then see it in your not for loan dropdown as the new description. So it would be 100% already there for you once you save it. Now, I, I do want to give a couple troubleshooting tips because these are things that we see that come, people ask us questions about. Let's say you had a collection code that you no longer wanted to use but you had items assigned to that collection code. Um, let's use parenting as an example, okay? Let's say we had maybe about 400 titles in a parenting collection code, and we decided that we were just gonna move those into a nonfiction collection code. The first thing you would wanna do before you delete that parenting collection code, you wanna go into your item, modification, so batch item modification tool, and move those parenting collection codes into a new value. Once those values are completely moved, then go in and delete your collection code value of parenting. Um, we see so often that people will, you know, delete it and there's still items attached and then um, you know, it has a null value. So, you know, just a troubleshooting tip there. Make sure you do the modification first before you delete. Oh, that's a great, great reminder to all of us. Delete is, is sometimes very powerful. You don't realize yeah. there are yeah. repercussions. Perfect. I think this is really helpful for a lot of people, whether they're just new to Koha and learning about authorized values, or again, learning about new features where new authorized values are being added into Koha. So this was great. Thank you, Jesse. Thank you, Kelly. We'll see you next week. See you next week. Bye. Bye.